Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. I'm Amen. telling you, I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord today. I am ready to enter his gates. I've already entered his gates. Amen. With thanksgiving. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. Hallelujah. And we're grateful for his mercy that endures forever. And we just want to praise him today and honor him for all that he is, for who he is in our lives. Amen. Blessings and glory and honor belong to him. And that's what we offer him today. Amen. Will you offer him that today? Oh. And we thank him for blessing us. Hallelujah. Oh, say, I just want to praise forever. And ever. And ever. And ever. For all. Come on. Say, for all you've done. Say blessings and glory, blessings and glory, and honor, they all belong to you. And we say thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Oh, say I just want to praise you forever. Come on, say forever and ever. team was singing this morning I was just meditating on the fact that the wonderful thing about heaven is the fact that we get to bless him forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever, and ever. Psalms 105 says this Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing psalms to him. Talk of all his wondrous works. Glory in his name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face forevermore. Remember his marvelous works, which he has done, his wonders, and the judgments of his mouth. 
Father, we just come to praise you. And we are beginning our praise on earth so that we can continue our praise in heaven. Come and tabernacle with us today. We know that you're already here and we acknowledge your presence in this place. That you come to save and to heal and to deliver. So manifest yourself in signs and wonders. Do something special for someone today because we have spent time in your presence. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. The psalmist says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless his holy name. And we are so thankful that we have the privilege and the opportunity one more time to come into God's house and to bless him. And we want to also thank God for those that are watching us online. Let's give our online family a great hand clap of praise and let them know that we appreciate them tuning in. Now you've got time. It's not too late. You can get on the phone. You can send that text message and let someone know that South Nashville is on the air today. And they're going to receive a tremendous blessing as we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Well, let's greet our pastor this morning as he comes to, to speak to us for just a moment and uplift us and encourage us as we walk in the Lord. Good morning, morning. and happy Sabbath to everybody. I trust that we are having a happy Sabbath already. Amen, amen, it is good. You know, it's such a wonderful thing that after we go through a week of toil and a week of trials and tribulations, we can always come into the house of the Lord on Sabbath morning and give him praise and honor and glory for all that he has done for us throughout the week, amen. Amen. This is a beautiful day. We had a good time at Sabbath School this morning to begin our day. We're having a good time already with our praise service, and we're going to have a good time with the rest of the service that follows. Amen. Amen. So again, Elder Bray has already welcomed you, those online and even offline. We want to make sure we welcome you again. Thank you for watching, and thank you for coming out today. And also, also, I'm going to take out a little bit of time because um, somebody in here needs some encouragement. Somebody needs a little more encouraging than they have already. So I need a couple of testimonies. Amen. I need a couple of testimonies, about three maybe. We got time to do it. So, so we've had a testimony this morning right at the end of the Sabbath school. Amen. I mean, it was powerful. Amen. So thank God. So now we're going to have about three more testimonies this morning. So let me start over here, and then we're going to move over here, and then we may move back over here, and then we may come back over here. But anyway, let's start to my left. Somebody come on and give us a testimony this morning. Tell us how good God has been to you over the past week or how bad the devil has been to you or whatever you got to say. Let's just tell us something about it. Amen. Amen. Start my left. Somebody got something to say about the Lord. I know you do. Amen. I'm going to wait. I got plenty of time. Amen. All right, then we start over here. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. I got excellent news, okay? Amen. We've been praying for Sister Sonia. Is that right, church? And we know that she's in the hospital waiting on a heart. She called me last night, and the spirit hit her. She got a heart. She has <laughs> an heart. Amen. She's in surgery right Amen. now as we speak. Amen. So yes. I'd like to say yes. thank you. Thank you. Nashville. Yes. Thank you. Yes. So much for the prayers. Yes. Because I'm a strong believer. All right. When prayers goes up, yes. blessings come, come down. down. Okay. Amen. Yes, Lord. Now, now, can anybody in here speak against that? 
you know, is there anyone in this place today who can say God is not good? Hey, Amen. God is good. One more. Yes. Somebody else. Somebody else. We're going to bring the mic to you so we can hear you. We need some testimonies. I'll All right. share something. Amen. Ooh, it's nothing as awesome as a heart. Well, that's all right. It's awesome but anyway. I'm so thankful. You know, the enemy has been strategically working against us, and we're growing, and we're heading in the direction that God wants us to head as a unit, as a body. We're getting closer, and we're thriving. And, you know, the enemy tries to put these little trips out in front of us, and I lost my job this week unexpectedly. So surprised they just decided to start making cuts. So me and my sister-in-law both lost our job in the same day. But I have felt nothing but comfort and excitement. Yeah. And I'm so thankful because I know that God has a plan for us. And I know that this was part of the path. And it's only a stepping stone to something better. That he's repositioning us to be in a place where we can serve him better. So whatever that looks like for me in my life, whether that's to have a job or to not have a job, whatever it is, I know that he has us in a position where we can bring glory and honor to his name. So I'm just thankful, thankful that I lost my job. So it could be a reminder to me that I am not in control. It is not in my hands. So I'm thankful. Thank you, Jesus, for what, for all you've done for me. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Oh, we got some more people in here today who just want to testify. Amen. I just had to testify. Amen. I just praise and thank God for this opportunity to just to praise him for what all he has done. Um, Pastor Robinson is my brother-in-law. Dr. Dr. Robinson is my sister. And we are here, my husband and I, uh, he's here for a cancer treatment. And uh, this past week, he had a few complications. He's been doing really well. We know that the saints of, of, of God are praying for him, but he's been doing really well with it. But this week, he started having a few complications. But, you know, and the devil yesterday, the devil was like, don't go to church. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> like, you yes. know, y'all stay home or whatever. But, you know, I, when we woke up this morning, I asked my husband, I said, what are we going to do? I asked him, how was he feeling? He said, I'm feeling good. Hey, Amen. <laughs> so I pray and yes. thank God that we are here, and I know God has something in store for us already. I've been blessed. So thank you. Thank you all for, uh, even if you've been praying for him, I know he's mentioned, uh, Pastor Robinson has mentioned uh, his name, Pastor Johnson. Um, and I want to ask you all to continue to keep him in your prayers. He has about 14 more treatments to go, 17. And so uh, just keep praying. Yes. Those prayers are working. Yes. Thank you all. Yes. Prayer. Amen. Prayer can change things. I know what prayer can do. Amen. I know what prayer can do. Amen. Amen. God is so good to us. Thank you, Sister Johnson, for your testimony. Thank you so much. Okay. Somebody else, raise your hand. If you want to just say something about the Lord, raise your hand. Yes. That's why we're here, church. We're here to praise God, you know. And we're here to have church. We didn't come to church today. We came to have church. Amen. So let's have church. Anybody else? All right, one more. Greetings, everyone. Amen. Amen. I wasn't going to say anything, but nonetheless, I'm thankful for the Heavenly Father, how he's been blessing us. I have a testimony about my brother. He's been going through a whole lot with his ex-wife. Mm. It's like every time we turn around, she have him in court for some reason. But nonetheless, he went to court on the first. And the judge sent him down for 90 days for contempt of court. Mm. But you know what? I'm still thankful. Yes. The reason why I'm thankful is because he has the opportunity now to get him some rest. Yes. 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 He has an opportunity yes. to rest. Yes. In my heavenly father, Yahweh, who is the one and only Elohim. Yes. You know, the words say in everything you have to give thanks, no matter what it is. And I'm just thankful that that happened because, you know, we look at things with our natural eyes. 
but we don't know what it is. And we have a saying that Father Yahweh knows the beginning to the end. That's a lie. When you read the word, it says he knows the end yes. from the beginning. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because what that tells me yes. is yes. we didn't know this was going to happen. But he knew it was going to happen before it happened. All right. So I'm just still thankful. The children, they have some children, and it's been some up and down and up and down. <laughs> and But still, still, it is still good. Because when my Heavenly Father say it is good, yes. trust me, yes. it is good. When he says it's good, it it's good. It is good yeah. no matter what it looks like. Yeah. It is good. Yeah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I give him praises and thanks for everything. Ooh. Hallelujah. Uh, oh, I also have another testimony. Okay. I was blessed to get, I think it's a 7 or 8% raise. All right. Hallelujah. <laughs> that I was not looking for. Yes. And I always tell people, I am quite content in whatever I make. All right. We don't live beyond our means. So however the Father chooses to bless, I am thankful for it. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 What a day. What a day. God is good. Anybody else? All right. Okay. Sister Carter. We are not going to not have a testimony on this side. Come on now. Yes. <laughs> I stand for all of us to say God has brought us through a whole week. Yes. And we here. Yes. So if we can't say it to the mic, we just going to give God praise on this side. All right. Give God amen. a praise over here. Amen. 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 Yes. Yes. We came to praise the Lord, so we got plenty of time to do that. That's what we're here for today. To give God the glory and honor for everything that he's done for us. Amen. Amen. Well, okay. Okay. If nobody else wants to testify, we're going to move forward. Thank you, Jesus, for this time. Uh, we do have a couple of first-time visitors with us today that we didn't um, acknowledge yet. Uh, Sister, I guess that Melissa, uh, this last name, I cannot pronounce this. You're a first time visitor, Melissa. Let me see your hand. All right, amen. Melissa in the back. <laughs> South Nashville, we got, a, we got somebody in this church who needs to let Melissa know how grateful we are that she came to visit with us today. So somebody in this church right now, I want you to stand up and just go to Melissa and just shake her hand and tell her, thank you for coming. <laughs> Melissa, why don't you just stand up for us, please? Please, just stand up for us so that we can all see you. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Now we have one more. We have one more. Uh, is this Shante, uh, Shanae Davis, sister, brother Davis, sister David, yes, stand up, okay, same thing, somebody go and, amen, amen, now we have your names, your phone numbers, and your addresses, so you'll never get rid of us now, okay, you're a part of us from this day forward, amen. Thank you so much. Amen. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. Okay, now we're going to settle down just a little bit, and um, we're going to talk a little bit about the phone ministry. We're going to move. We're almost finished. We're not going to meet today uh, with the phone ministry uh, team because we're working on finishing up the church leaders, the, the uh, spirit-led ministry. And we want to wait until that is finished so that we'll know what ministry to put you under. And at that point in time, then we can move forward with the uh, logistics of how we're going to go about doing the phone ministry. Okay? One other thing, church, if we want to, to remain healthy 
and have a really good, healthy church, then we need to have a good, healthy prayer session. Okay? If, there, if we don't have a good prayer uh, session or a good prayer in church, then we don't have a healthy church. Amen. I just want you to know this, that since the pandemic hit, over 45,000 churches have closed their doors for good, forever. Amen. Now, we understand some of them were dying before the pandemic hit, but when the pandemic hit, it just really knocked them on out and took some more with them. But we're not going to be one that's going to die. We're going to stop dying right now and start living. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to start living. So let's strengthen our prayer, our prayer, our, our, our prayer sessions. Let's strengthen the prayer and start praying for ourselves as well as each other. Amen. We need to pray for each other, not fighting. We fight too much. Let's stop fighting and start praying. Amen. On the last Sabbath in this month, we're going to have communion service. Now, now, I'm telling you this now so that you have time to get your life straight with people that you don't like. Amen? And don't tell me you don't have them. I know you have them. Amen. You got people that you don't care much for. Some people have rubbed you the wrong way. Amen. Some have not rubbed you at all. Sometimes we've come to church and we've leave saying, you know, I sat right next to this person or this person walked past me and never even said a word to me, wouldn't even speak. We got that in the church too. So if you feel that somebody has done you wrong, you got time to just go and touch them on the shoulder and say, listen, I just want to, I just, I just got a question, just something on my mind. Uh, I noticed that sometimes I try to talk to you or say something. You walk past me and you won't say anything. Is it just on me or is it you or do we have a problem? And most of the time, the person will tell you, no, it's you. I don't have a problem. So you know what to do then. You got to drop down on your knees then and give God some glory and say, thank you, Lord, I know it's me. Accept the responsibility and say, Lord, thank you, because we do have that. So we have time now to do that between now and the end of this year, whereby we're going to have the communion service during the service, and then we're going to have a little brunch, I think it was said, and then after that, we're going to have our close out uh, the year prayer session and anointing where we're going to have a little singing and a little dancing and well I know nobody said anything to that so I'm going to take that back we may not have the dancing but we're going to have the we're going to have everything else that goes along with that amen but we're going to have a good time so I want you to come as you are on that evening amen but so we can give God the glory the honor for all he has done for us throughout this entire year. And I tell you, God has been good to us this year, hasn't he not? He has been good to us this year. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So let's continue to worship God in spirit and in truth. Love you all, and I know you love me too. So to God be the glory. Thank you. No, you can go ahead. Morning, church family. It's been a good morning so far. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. This morning's scripture will be taken from the book of 2 Samuel. That's in the Old Testament. Uh, could you stand for the reading of the word? Uh, 2 Samuel, the fifth chapter. We'll be reading verses 6 through 10. When you have it, would you say amen right there? Amen. We will read it together. Okay. And the king and his men went to Jerusalem unto the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, which spake unto David, saying, Except thou take away the blind and the lame, 
Thou shalt not come in hither, thinking David cannot come in hither. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion. The same is the city of David. And David said on that day, Whosoever get it up to the gutter and smite it, the Jebusites and the lame and the blind that I hated of David's soul, he should be chief and captain. Therefore they said, the blind and the lame should not come in into the house. So David dwelled in the fort and called it the city of David. And David built round about from Milo and inward. And David went on and grew great. And the Lord God of hosts was with him. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word. You may be seated. This morning, what a wonderful privilege we have to worship God in the area of our giving. How many can just pause for just a second as we come to the close of this year and simply acknowledge the fact that God has been good to us? Is there one? I feel like the preacher making an appeal. Is there one that can say that God has been good to them this year? And as we come to the close of the year, we have what we traditionally call in God's church, square up with God month. Now, I'm not here to tell you that you should write a check for a whole year of back tie. However, the Lord might tell you to do that. But I am telling you that starting today, this day forward, I'm going to make a commitment to be faithful to God in the area of my tithes and in the area of my offering. On the screen very shortly, you will see the various ways in which you can connect with us at South Nashville. You can connect with us online through our website, southnashvillesda.org. Click the button that says Give, and you will be connected with Adventist Giving. We're also set up to receive your gift on Cash App as well as PayPal. Or you can put your gift in the mail to us at 244 Tusculum Road, Antioch, Tennessee, 37013. However you choose to connect with us, God requires that we be faithful. Financial stewardship is really an extension of our relationship with God as Lord into the management of our physical and material blessings. Financial discipleship opens the gates of opportunity to glorify God in daily life. It is a way to exalt him in our own hearts before the world. Returning 10% isn't the ceiling of giving. It's the floor. This is our power thought today. Returning 10% isn't the ceiling of our giving. It's the floor. It is not the finish line of giving. It is just the starting block. Father, today we've come to worship you not only with our, the praise on our lips, but not only with our hands lifted and our hearts raised to you, but we've also come to worship you in the area of our giving because you have been so good to us. So, Father, take our gifts and bless them and multiply them so that the gospel can go throughout the earth and Jesus can come soon. Take our gifts, oh God, and worship before the Father on our behalf. Thank you for every blessing. Thank you for the blessing of life itself. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Can we do something a little different before we go to the throne of grace for prayer? Can we make a declaration that goes like this? We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the fields. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the fields. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are Sing it one more time. We're blessed. Come on, receive that blessing. We're blessed in the fields. Yes, we are. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold, sickness, and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Say this. Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. And it's going to work in your favor. Do you believe it? Say, late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. It's going to work in your favor. Say it again if you believe. Say, late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. Yes, he will. It's going to work in your favor. If you believe, say, and poverty must cease for the devil is defeated we are blessed come on give God praise and that's how we go to the throne of grace with the confidence knowing that he's going to do just what he said he would do Amen. hallelujah Amen. 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 y'all making me wish I was up there singing today that's a beautiful song because we certainly are blessed, and a lot of times, you know, we think that we're not, and things happen to us, and we think that no one's there. But in the midnight hour, when we least expect it, That's it. God always comes through. Yes, he does. He's not going to come through on your time. He's going to come through on his time, and we have to realize that. And if you want to come down closer to pray with God, with me, come down now so we can leave all our worries behind, all our cares, all our stresses that we go through throughout the week. We thank God for allowing us to have a place where we can come as a family and pray with him so that we may be able to get up and walk and not always falling down. We have to get up when things happen. Depend on the Lord. And if you are watching online, if you're in the bed or on the couch, if you want to kneel down and get ready for prayer, you can do that too. But Lord, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for the Sabbath day, Lord. There's so many things going on these days. And like we heard today during testimony, Lord, that we have church members who are going through things. And I'm so glad that we're able to give testimony. We thank God and ask that we... Pray for the Hammonds family. They, they lost their uncle this week, and we are blessed that she was, her and her husband were still able to come to worship, Lord, but we ask you to comfort them in their time. And we also want to give a special prayer to uh, Christy. She lost her job, Lord. And, you know, just like she was saying, you know, sometimes you lose things and God has something planned for you right around the corner. Maybe it's to start your own business. You never know. Maybe he don't want you to work for somebody. You know, there's a, there's a lot of businesses that, 
you know, that, that can start um, when something negative happens. So we pray for you and your family during that time. And, you know, Vicki, she got a raise, you know. Somebody lost a job, but then somebody got a raise. So that's a blessing, too. And we, we pray that uh, she will continue to do well in her job, Lord. And um, we just thank you so much for all your blessings. Uh, Miss Sonia, she got a heart, and she's being operated on. We pray that uh, she will be fine, Lord, that she will get through it. And we know that you will continue to bless her, Lord. And we just thank you so much for all your blessings. And I know I haven't closed my eyes, but that's okay. We just, we just worshiping, right? We're just worshiping. And we just, um, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, I preached for the young people a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, there's things that, you know, adults are going through too. You know, loneliness, people that, you know, they're not married and they're lonely and they don't know how to deal with that. We ask you to pray for them, Lord. We have, you know, people that are going through emotional issues. You know, they don't know how to express themselves to their friends, to their family. And they're going through things, Lord. And we, you know, especially, again, the young people, we ask you to continue to pray for them. Um, they're going through so many things each and every day. And we ask that, you know, people in the church, if you, you know, befriend a young person, you know, don't just depend on, you know, their parents. You know, if you see a kid that's struggling, make sure you, you come up to them, pray for them. Pray for them right then and there. Don't, don't walk away and say, hey, I'll pray for you. And then when you get home, you get distracted and you don't pray. So, you know, sometimes it's best to just to go ahead and pray for them right then and there. And, um, Lord, we just, we just thank you for all your blessings. There's, there's nothing that um, in this world that um, is so hard that we can't come to you. And a lot of times, you know, some of the things that we're going through is because we're not making room for you. I was listening to a song last night by Jonathan McReynolds. And it really hit hard on me because I was thinking about myself and the church. Sometimes we just don't make room for God. You know, we put our husband, our wife ahead of God, our job, how much money we make, our cars. We don't make God a number one priority. And we're suffering for that. And, you know, kids, we do this, kids do the same thing. They put their video games ahead of God. They put... Uh, the internet and Facebook and Instagram and how many likes you got, none of that's important. We have to make room for God. We have to make sure he is a number one priority. We have to make room for how many people? Two, me and God. It can't just be one person. God wants to know that you want to spend time with him. And if he's going to get jealous. He's a jealous God. So he wants to spend time with you but we have to make room for him. It's very, very important. And Lord, we just continue to ask you just to be with our church family uh, during the time where we're uh, also um, getting officers for the church, Lord. It's been a long road, but we're, we're almost done. We ask you to pray for the people who are uh, head of the committee and doing that, Lord. And we ask the church for patience. And we just ask you to continue to, to bless our church family uh, I feel the spirit in this church each and every week uh, that we come here, Lord. We, we are in a transition, but we ask you to continue to, the people that are working in the church, we ask you to continue to be with them each and every day and give them strength. And for the people who are on the sidelines, we ask for them to, to, to step up, Lord. We need more people to step up in our church. We need different ideas. We need different ideologies. We need to get different opinions. We don't just need the opinions of the same eight to ten people. We need the opinions of the whole church. And we just ask you, Lord, to continue to be with us, keep us safe, bless us, Lord, and with a special prayer for those who are sick and shut in, Lord. They're not able to come to church. And we ask you to bless the families that are going through it with sick and loved ones, Lord. And we just thank you again for all your blessings. And we thank you for your Sabbath day. And we know you will continue to bless us. And we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. What a privilege and an honor to approach the throne of God. Amen. Laying all of our needs before him. Hallelujah. And when I lay my needs at the feet of Jesus, I get up with the confidence in knowing that he's going to meet 
my needs according to his riches in glory because he is good amen and he has planned good for me amen he has plans for me that are going to prosper me amen not harm me amen but to prosper me and so we declare the goodness of the Lord all over this room today hallelujah the Lord is good and we give him praise because he's good and his mercy endures forever it's everlasting and we give him honor for that and we trust him because he's good amen we love him because he's good and we praise him because he's good come on will you stand on your feet and put your hands together in the presence of the Lord as we give him honor for who he is hallelujah for who you are God we worship you oh let's take it right here Lord you are good say you are good and come on y'all know this one come on sing it to your father say Lord you are good and your mercy endure Say people from every nation, people from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. to you we give him all the praise because he's good and he deserves the praise hallelujah say lord you are good and your you are good and your mercy endures come on say it endures forever i'm glad about it lord you are good, you are good and your mercy endures forever say people from every nation people from ever come on that's us from generation we worship you hey hallelujah hallelujah oh we worship you for who you are come on he's a faithful god and we worship we worship you You are? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. I love this part. Say you are good. You are good all the time. All the time. You are good. You've been so faithful all the time. All the time. You are good. You are. You are good all the time. All the time. You never fail. good and your mercy endureth forever hey lord you are good and your mercy you come on those mercies are brand new every day i'm grateful for it say lord you are lord, good, you are good come on even when we're not good forever. his mercy endureth forever lord you are good and your mercy endureth forever Lord, you are good and your mercy forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy. Your mercy endureth forever. Come on, say, Lord, you are good and 
Come on, we declare it. Oh God, say, Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Come on, if you're grateful for it, say, Lord, you are Lord. You are good and your mercy endures Come on, tell your situation. Come on, tell your sickness. Say, the mercy of the Lord endures forever. I trust in him for he is good and his mercy, it follows me all the days of my life. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. I'm so grateful for the goodness and the mercy of our God. Oh. Come on, just worship him right now. Come on, just fill it in right there. Tell him, God, thank you for being good. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for your mercy. We didn't deserve it, but it's brand new every day. Yeah. Oh, oh. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Oh, we declare it. Say, Lord, you are good. Your mercy endureth forever. One more time, declare it. Say, Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the name of Jesus for his goodness and his mercy we're grateful for God oh for your goodness and your mercy we're grateful for it because it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are you won't be anything else he cannot help but to be good saints he cannot help but to extend his mercy to us every day because that's just who he is. And that's why we're here to worship because that's the God we serve. That's the one that we serve. He is the great I am and we honor him. We worship him for who he is. Come on, he's the one that brings about brand new hearts. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He's the one that gives raises. Amen. He's the one that holds you in the middle of it all. Amen. He's the one that keeps you. The one that sustains you. The one that regulates your mind. It's who he is. And we declare that here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. And here I am to say that you're my God. together worthy yes you are all oh, together wonder fall to me lift it up say here I am here I am to worship 
think about what he did for you and me. Oh, when I think about what you've done for me, oh God, I'll never understand the sacrifice. I'll never quite get it. Don't know why you did it. Oh God, but I'm grateful that you did it for me. Oh God, thank you for doing it for me. Oh, and then you still extend your grace and your mercy after giving everything the least we can do is say right here, right now that here I am to worship here I am to power Woo. here I am to I will say of the Lord you're my you're all together you're all together you're all together worthy yes you are you're worthy of it all God oh you're so wonderful yes you are say that you're my you're my God you are you are you are you're all together love all together worthy all together wonderful you're wonderful one more time here I am to worship you here I am to here I am to worship you God, 
Oh, we honor you for who you are. Thank you, Jesus. Every morning of this past week, when I woke up, the devil would tell me, Luke, you're not going to preach Sabbath. The devil thought that he could stop me from reaching the Jebusites kingdom. You see, there's a Jebusite kingdom in everybody's life. And if you listen to the Jebusites saying that you can't come up here, you got a problem. Because the Bible says David went, I mean, David went on and God was with them. Put my text on the screen, somebody, please. Church, it's about God. It's not about the devil. It's not about you. It's not about who you are. God doesn't care about who you are. God wants you to know who he is. Amen. We... Yes, we've had some testimonies up in here today. We've had church here this morning because we are beginning to figure out now who God really is. I'm not talking about what he did for my mama and my daddy and my sisters and brothers. I'm talking about what he did for me. And oftentimes, yeah, so many times we want to go back in the Bible and say what God did for Matthew and what God did for Mark and what God did for John. But I'm here today to tell you what God did for me. Yeah, I'm not back there with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I'm here today, right now. Current events. What is God doing in your life right now? What do you want him to do in your life right now? Then you got to call him up and tell him what you want. And I promise you, he'll do it for you. And you know how I know? Because you've been telling me all morning long what God has been done. He'll give you a new heart. What David said created me a, a clean heart and renewed the right spirit within me. Well, God just created a clean heart within somebody. This Amen. So God is good. How many times? All the time. And all the time, God is good. Amen. Amen to God. Yes, 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 yes. You know what? Somebody should shout, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Come on, let's sing it. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, come on, James, and help me out a little bit here. Come on, help me out, James. Yeah. Help me out. Victory. Oh, victory is mine. Yeah. Victory is mine. Yeah.
Now, now it's time to read our text for the day. Hallelujah. You, 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 you got a foretaste earlier, but let's read it again. And I want y'all to read it with me this time. I want to hear your voices. And the king and his what? Men. And what did they do? Went to Jerusalem. Unto the what? The Jebusites kingdom. The what? Inhabitants of the land which spake unto David, saying, what did he say? Thou shalt David. All right, let's read some more. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Come on now, David did what? The same is the city of David. And the same is called what? And David said, On that day, whosoever get it up to the gutter. And and uh, and uh, that are uh, hatred of David's soul, he shall what? And wherefore the blind and the lame shall not come into the house. All right. So what? David did what? Dwelt in the fort and called it the city of David. And David from Milo at Inward. And David did what? Went on. And did what? Great. And who was with him? The Lord of hosts was with him. Father, in the name of Jesus, Jesus. if you can go up to the Jebusite's kingdom with David and bring the Jebusite down, I know that we can bring the devil down in this place today. <laughs> Amen. So somebody's going to tell Satan, Satan, we came here today to tear your kingdom down. Amen. We're going to bring it down. We're going to bring it down today. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus. Who God. Speak to us. Encourage us. Give us some strength and wisdom to use it. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the whole church say amen, amen, and amen. And the Bible says, and David went on, and he grew great, and the Lord was with him. Church, sometimes you just got to go on. I know, I know, I know, I know you're faced with some difficulties and some times of trouble and issues and problems and sickness and all kinds of stuff. But the Bible says, and David went on. He didn't let the flu stop him or COVID stop him. Or David did not let an accident on the road stop him or the traffic jam stop him. David went on. And by going on, what happened to him? He grew great. Amen. See, amen. You can't grow great if you don't go on. You got to go on. You got to move forward in order to grow great in the Lord. Amen. Amen. So, so God empowers his children when they don't allow unpleasant situations to derail their walk with him, especially when he promised that he would be with us always, always, even until the end of the world. He will never leave us nor forsake us. I don't care what's going on in your life. And I told you once before, I'm going to tell you again, church as Seventh-day Adventist Christians, your job is to help one another. Now, let me say this to you because you can get weary on the way. But just in the case the devil messes your life up because you're helping somebody, just tell him he's a liar. I'm going to help somebody until God tells me not to help anymore. Amen. If God never says quit, I am never going to quit. Amen. I'm going to keep on doing it. And you know what? The devil's going to keep on coming, but that's all right because God is with me. Amen. I'm going to go up on that mountain and I'm going to bring the Jebusite's kingdom down. Look at somebody and say, I'm going to bring him down. I'm bringing it down. Amen. Amen. You see, in this gap where we are surrounded by the enemies, the enemies of war who has set traps everywhere for us and are sitting back watching us struggle with ourselves and struggle with each other. So our prayer should be today be consistent asking God for wisdom to help us to overcome these problems and these troubled times that we are dealing with. Because if you're not careful, 
the wisdom that the devil sends you will destroy you. Amen. So you see, South Nashville, amen, we have been sentenced to die, so we are under the shadow of death, both day and night, but God is with us. He sent his son to restore life, but the shadow of death, like a dark cloud, hovers over us and watches us like a spy. And, and, and in order for us to survive this ordeal, we must put on the mindset of David and follow his lead. Get bold like David and resound your voices like God says. Yea, David said, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. You know why? Because thou art with me. So I don't have to fear any evil in this life because he is with me. Amen. And then he went on to say, thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Amen. So, 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 so sometimes when this walk gets a little weary, just, just, just think about how good God was to David, the worst man on the earth. He was a murderer. He was a bloody man. He had bloody hands. But David loved the Lord. And even with bloody hands, even with a messed up mind, God said it. I didn't say it. God said he was a man after God's own heart. So, 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 so you can't stop. Amen. You can't stop. Yea, do I walk through the shadow, the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. They have, thou hast prepared a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Amen. So, so, so let them talk about you all they want to. Let them do whatever they want to do. But God is going to prepare a table for you. You see, you see, you don't have to eat off of my table. If you stick with God, God got a table for you already ready for you. Amen. All you got to do is just get ready for God. Amen. Oh, I love him. I love him. He, he thou has anointed my head with oil. And my cup, I don't know about yours, my cup is running over this morning. Amen. Amen. Now, now, now David recognized that he is ready to fight because he fears nothing. And that's why I want to talk a little bit today about the warfare of the believer. Amen. The warfare of the believer. Now, I may not finish this message today, but I'm going to do the best that I can. Amen. Not to keep you too long. Amen. Now, let me remind you, the Christians, that as Christians in this life, there are two stages that fit us for the kingdom of God. Number one, the walk of the believer. Number two, the warfare of the believer. You see, as it relates to the will and purpose of God, our commitment to God is sometimes seen only in conversations. Many times we talk about the God that we heard about and servants in the God that becomes more of a tradition than a reality. You know, like, well, my daddy was a Christian. My mama was a Christian. And all my family was Christian. And so on and on and on. But I want you to know that does not make you a Christian. Amen. Amen. But when it comes to serving citations, like crying loud, despair not, sometimes we fall short because we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. So sometimes we see wrong. And we won't address it because we don't want to hurt the people, that, the person that's doing wrong. But let me tell you something. If you are going to be a friend of mine, then when you see me going wrong, you touch me on the shoulder and say, Pastor, I think you're headed in the wrong direction. Amen. You know, don't, 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 don't see me walking toward a pit and don't tell me that it's up there. Don't, don't allow me to fall when you know. Amen that the bridge is out. Amen. You need to come and tell me, Pastor, you know what? The bridge is out up there, so you need to take another route. Amen. But otherwise, some of us, we can see wrong, and we won't say a word about it. We wait and let the person fall, and then, you know, we say, well, I knew it. I knew that was going to happen. Well, the Bible says it's better not to know than not do than to know and not do. So if you know and you don't do it, then you got a problem. Amen. So let's fix it. 
Let's fix it. So, so as Christians, we must put on, you know, we put on the uniform. We get dressed up and we look good. We do. But a lot of time we don't put on the badge. Amen. You see, uh, today, I want you to understand something about, about what it takes to get you power. A police officer can walk up to your door to arrest you. And he can knock on your door. And when you come to the door and you can see that little guy, that little joker may look like Bunny Five. Somebody you can say, you know what, if you don't get away from my door, man, I'll drag you around here. I'll sweep this yard with you. Except for that badge. Amen. You, you, you see, you can have the uniform on, you can look good, but if you don't wear the badge, you ain't got no power. The only thing that gives you power as a police officer is that badge. Amen. So I want to ask you today, do you have the badge? Are you wearing the real true badge? Amen. Because that's what you got to have today is the badge. You know, the uniform makes you look all dressed up, but the badge gives you the, the, the power to do what you need to do. So that man can walk up there, and if you don't open the door, he can kick your door down, and ain't nothing you can do about it because the whole force is behind him. Whether he's right or whether he's wrong, they're going to take care of him right then and there. Amen. And so I'm here to tell you today that we got to start taking care of each other. When I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. When I'm right, tell me I'm right too. That's nothing wrong with telling me, Pastor, you were right. Just as well as there's nothing wrong with you telling me I'm wrong. Amen. Amen. So, but in order to reach this destination, get this authority, you got to know who your power is coming from. You see, we have to reach a destination in life. You know, in order to go where God is sending you or where you're trying to go, you need to know where are you going to go, and then God will tell you how to get there. Amen. See, many times we know where we want to go, but we just don't know how to get there. Amen. And so we're going to get there by walking. As a believer, the walk of the believer is progressive. You see, it takes time to walk with God because you first got to have a destination. And it's very similar to the American dream, but there's a difference. Because if you are not careful, this walk will encourage you to go after God's wealth and use it in the devil's economy. I want you to understand that because sometimes we use God's money in the wrong way. And then we say, this is my money. No, it's not your money. You, I'm going to let Elder Bray tell y'all that next time. It's not your money. Amen. You know, spending God's money, spending God's money that you don't own to buy things that you really don't need, try to impress people that you really don't care much for is not good. Please don't forget what the Bible says about the gold and the silver and the cattle on a thousand hills. Amen. So to walk with God, your destination has to be the new earth, which is heaven. So if you're not set on going to heaven, then you might as well stop walking with God because God walk takes you to heaven. It doesn't take you in America. Amen or the American dream. It takes you to your heavenly dream, the promise. Amen. Now, 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 let me run a few things by you real quick that you can't do if you are planning to occupy a mansion in heaven. Number one, you can't shack with Delilah and use God's money to pay the rent. Amen. Amen. If you're going to run out to Delilah, then you need to ask the Philistine to pay for it. <laughs> Amen. Now, the next thing is you can't use God's money to buy tobacco in all of his form. If you want to go out there and buy you some snuff, amen, don't use God's money for that. If you want to buy some tobacco and cigarettes and weed and all that stuff, don't use God's money for it. God money wasn't designed for that. Amen. So, so you're using it for the wrong thing if that's what you're using it for. Number three, you can't use God's money at the casino. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, uh, even in the lottery line. Okay. All right. Okay. You can't use God's money to pay your phone bill before you return your tithes and offerings. You see, sometimes when we get that paycheck, the first thing we think about is my phone bill. Well, I got to get me a new phone. So, well, I can't give God the money today because I got to have a new phone. You don't have to have no new phone. I remember when we didn't have a phone at all. And you know what? We survived. Amen. I understand I wasn't there, but I understand that back in Africa, amen, they communicated with drums where they carve out hollow logs and beat them, boom, 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 boom. I wouldn't know what's going on, but they did. Amen. So, 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 in other words, you can't give any money to Caesar without having given God his part first. You see, the Bible tells you, and Jesus said, give Caesar what is Caesar and give God what is God. But what Caesar did, Caesar didn't trust you. So Caesar took your money before you even got your paycheck. Yeah, 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 but see God, amen. Yeah, he took it and did whatever he wanted to do with it. They fly around all over the world. They spend big money on drinks and dinners and women and foolish stuff, stuff with your money. And you can't do a thing about it. Just say amen. But God doesn't do that. God allows you to get that paycheck and look at it. Get home. Sit down. Think about everything you can do with it. But then God expects you to say, well, but you know what? I've already made up in my mind that 10% of this money going to the Lord is not mine. That's God's money. Because he gave me the money just to hold it for a minute. But I know I got to give him 10% of this back. And then on top of that, you come here, and you have a good time. We've had a good time today, ever. But it costs money. Amen. See, you're not coming up in here and have a good time if you ain't spending no money. Because if you don't pay N and S, you ain't going to have no lights up in here. And I don't care how you preach, how you sing, how you pray, these lights are not coming on until you go down there and pay. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So the church got to have some funds in order to keep moving. So don't feel bad when you hear the stewardship secretary or the treasurer stand up here and pleading. And they are not asking you to give anything that you shouldn't be given. They only ask you to give what you're supposed to give, what you promised God you were going to do. So be loyal to your promise. Amen. Amen. And so it's a spiritual journey. And to reach this destination, you must take the road of hard knocks. Like Job said, man that is born of a woman is a few days, and those days are full of trouble. So there will be no happiness all the time. And if you see people always happy and happy and always saying they feel so good and they're so happy, you better watch those people. Amen. Because nobody happy all the time. Even Jesus wasn't happy all the time. Got down there in the garden of Gethsemane and said, Father, if it be possible, get me out of this. He wasn't happy all the time. So you can't be happy all the time. You can't get enough Jesus in you to be happy all the time. So stop trying to fool people and make like you're so happy all the time. No, that ain't going to happen. Amen. Amen. And so, and so, and so, there will be no happiness all the time. Look, family, all of us are born into the city of destruction. And we will stay there unless we change our destination. In here, we got to change it in order to make a change in this life. Amen. Romans 3.23 is the first step. You make that change by asking God to forgive your sins and give you the gift of eternal life. See, God got to give that to you. And you're not asking for anything that's not already promised. This is a promise in John 3, 16. 
And the Bible is the map, and prayer is the strength. That's why in the Adventist church, you get some lessons before you get baptized. So you can get a vision of your destination. So the question is, why did you get baptized if you knew you were not going to change your direction? Most people, a lot of times, they get baptized with the hope that maybe this is what I need. Maybe this will help me. No, baptism ain't going to help you. Baptism is going to clean you up once you've been helped. You see, it's the Holy Spirit that's going to help you. So now, once you get help, you're dirty before that. It's like, it's like, it's like I don't know if some of you ever been in the hospital in the delivery room when your wife is having a baby. I don't know if some of y'all have been, some have not. But anyway, anyway, they talk about labor. That is labor. That is labor. And I wonder sometimes, why is it that a woman would go through that and get up off the labor table nine months later and have another baby? I don't get it. I, I don't get it. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying. I, I'm, I'm just saying now. Be careful. Amen. See, I, I don't understand that. If, if, if I had to have a baby and, and, and I went through it one time, when I get off that labor table, I'm going to tell them this. Y'all can take that one. I mean, that bad boy brought all this pain and labor to me. I don't need that. Y'all have that baby. But, and, and then the thing is, see, when the baby comes out, the baby don't come out all clean and dressed up and ready to be delivered. The baby comes out a little wet, a little blood on them, a little messed up. So the nurse got to take that baby and clean that baby up before they present the baby. And that's what the gospel does for us. When we come to God, we come messed up. We're all dirty. We're all messed up with all kinds of dope and drugs and lies and cheating and bad attitudes. And, and we got all kinds of stuff going on in us, inside of us. Amen. And, 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 and so, but, but the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit takes us and cleans us up and present us to be used in the service of God. Amen. And so that's what we are today. We're in the service of God because we've been clean. Now, if you like a pig or a hog, then you need to go back to the hog pen. But if you're going to like that joker, if you're going to clean me up and I'm going to change, then I'm not going back to the hog pen. I'm going home. I'm going to be like the prodigal son. See, uh, when I get cleaned up, I'm coming out of that hog pen. And that's what I did. Thank God for the Seventh-day Adventist Church. How many of you are thankful for the Seventh-day Adventist Church? This is the best thing could have happened to me in this life. Amen. You see, and God leads us to tear down those kingdoms. And, and I'm not going all the way up to the Jebusite today. I'm not going up to his kingdom. I'm going to go next Sabbath. I'm going to finish the way. But I got to say something to you to help you to understand how God works and prepares you for what's to come. Amen. I told you one time how I, my, the, uh, I was in a world that it was fake. And I was on the stage all the time, day and night, trying to outdo somebody. I was trying to outplay pool and I was trying to outsell dope and I was trying to outlook people. I had all of my super fly, fly clothes, you know, my long coat, my high heel shoes, and my hatchet and my briefcase with a little cocaine in it and a little weed. See, I had that. Amen. Yeah, so you could walk down on the corner by Loophole's Bar. On the, on, the, on, on the corner of Remsen Avenue and Handy Street. And if you ever wanted to see Luke, all you had to do, you didn't have to ask for him, just come down. And if you didn't see me, just hang there just for a minute. And in a minute, you'll see me coming with my green Nehru suit on and my yellow, amen, see? So, so I thought that was the world. Driving around in my Cadillac, you know, and my Buick uh, Riviera and all of that stuff. And when everybody sees me, they go, Luke, Luke, Luke. Amen. I was, I was the icon of the, of the, of the, of the area. <laughs> Amen. But one day, one day, I was introduced to cool in the game. I thought, this is it now. I hit the bass. I hit a few strings on the bass guitar. Somebody told me, man, you can play. You can, you, you can join a band. 
And then a young dude said, listen, man, my cousin plays with cool in the game, man. I'm going to take you up and, you know, we're going to hang out together. So I, we get in the car. We go from New Brunswick, New Jersey, up to, up to uh, 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 Teaneck, up to New Jersey, and went to the studio and went up in there and met all the brothers. Sounds so good. I said, yeah, I can do this. Couldn't play a lick. <laughs> Amen. One note was all I knew. So the brother came over to me and said, hey, man, listen, why don't you snort a little bit of this, man? Maybe that'll help you. And here I go, man. And still couldn't play. So, so they said, well, listen, you can hang with my brother. You can, you know, you can hook up stuff and take down stuff, but don't, 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 don't pick up the guitar. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. But I said, well, I can't play, but I know what I can do. So I got my, my little briefcase again and went back out there, and that whole world fell, and I found myself early one morning standing on the Perth Amboy Bridge just across the river from Staten Island, wrestling between life and death. Lord, God, how did I get here? What happened? And then God sends a hippie. I'm up on the bridge. I hear a voice. Hey, brother. Hey, brother, don't do that, man. I don't know, whatever it is, whatever it is you're going through, man, don't let it take you. Look at me. Look at me. And I didn't want to look back, but he said, brother, look at me. I looked back, and there's a hippie with hair all the way down here, all matted and, and patched up clothes and all that stuff. And he said, brother, the world hates me, but I ain't going to die. I'm going to get back in my little Volkswagen and I'm going on down the road in a few minutes. And he got my attention. I stepped down off that bridge and the Holy Spirit talked to me that morning and said, Luke, call your mama. Call your mama. Go home. And see, that's what sometimes we don't want to do. We don't want to go back home. Amen. We think we are so bad and so big and so good. We think we got it all together. Oh, no, I can handle this. I can do this. No, you can't. You can't handle Satan. Don't you try it. Give it up. And let God take control of your life. Well, God made me a minister that day and told me to go home. And early the next morning, I found myself in my little 1971 Fiat 850 Spider. Amen. With what little stuff I had in the trunk. The trunk was on the front. And I hit that New Jersey turnpike. And I started driving south. And the devil started whispering in my ears. He said, turn around. Go back, showing me all of the good times that I thought I was having. But every time the devil showed me my good times, the devil showed me the bad time that I was facing. And I said, you know what, Lord, I'm going to keep rolling. I'm a, now, now, before I left New Brunswick, I went and got me a bag of weed. I went to the liquor store and got me a little half a pint of Kentucky bourbon. Now, I don't want to tell you that because I don't, somebody may, somebody may have one stashed under your seat out there right now just waiting to get out of church. So I, I shouldn't have brought that to your face. And, and, and I bought me a six pack of Miller Highlight. I, I wanted some Pat's Blue Ribbon, but I said, no, nah, this is going to be worked out right here. And I hit that road, and I drove all night that night. Early the next morning when the sun was coming up, the devil was still telling me, turn around. I even stopped at a gas station. I almost turned around. But God says, I'm with you. You got to keep on moving. So I kept moving. I got down into Atlanta, Georgia, around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And when I was leaving out of Atlanta, headed on down to Tuskegee, Alabama, I called, stopped to call my mom. I said, Mom, I'm in Atlanta right now. I'm coming home. So she said, come on. I drove another couple of hours. It was just getting dark. Pulled up in that driveway, stepped out of that little Fiat Spider. My mother ran out that door with her arms wide open and said, they're my child. They're my child. Well, if an earthly mother feels that way about you, 
you think about how your heavenly father is going to feel about you when he sees you coming. See, so when you make up in your mind that I'm going to follow Jesus, God says, they're my child. Maybe a little dirty, but he's still my baby. Look at him. He, he got some, yeah, yeah, he, he got some, he, he, got, he, he smells like slop, but he's still my baby. Amen, amen. He got some mud between his toes, but he's still my baby. And, and, and he made a, 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 a way for me to come out of that world and come into his world. And then he made me a pastor. Amen. And I didn't know it. And then he sent me down to Oakwood University. I didn't know that. And then told me, you're going to come here and be a minister. And I said, no, I am not coming down here to be a minister. I'm not. Amen. And, 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 then, and, and then the Lord showed me, no, no, you're not coming down here to be a minister. You're coming down there because you are a minister. So I've already fixed you. I got you ready. But you need to go down there now and learn how to communicate with the people. So I thank God for that. So here I am now talking with you because you are looking at a miracle in work. You need, you're looking at a person who learned how to walk the walk, not just talk the talk. Amen. Amen. See, so we got to stop just talking the talk and start walking the walk. Amen. And when we do that, South Nashville, we're going to have some power up in here. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about the kind of power that if anybody dropped dead in here, we can get around that person and say a prayer and raise them up. I'm talking about that kind of power. I'm talking about the power that Jesus had that brought Jesus from the grave. I'm talking about the power that Jesus had to bring Lazarus from the grave. I'm talking about power that God has already waiting for us. All we got to do is accept it. I heard my wife saying this morning, telling everybody we got to put on the whole armor of God. Now, let me tell you something about the armor. The armor is waiting for us. God has already prepared the armor. You don't have to go out and buy it. You don't have to go and steal no armor. You don't have to go and do any of that. All you got to do is put it on. God has already made it. Just put it on. Just wrap yourself up in God's armor. And I promise you, when the devil comes up against you and says, you can't come up here, you can tell him you're a liar. And sometimes you don't even have to talk to the devil. You just get on up there. Just go and do it because sometimes the devil wants to argue with you. See, he wants to get you in an argument. You know, the devil wants to stand up to you and tell you you ain't nothing. You can't get up here. And then he wants you to tell him, oh, watch me. I'm going to get up there. Watch me. And the devil starts slapping you and slapping you. And you start, you saying, but well, you know what? I'm still coming. I'm still coming. But you ain't going nowhere because the devil is knocking you down. But when you get tired of the devil beating you, after a while, you're going to get up and you're going to move on up the ladder. You know why? Because your walk with God is progressive. See, you don't take a step every day. You take a step every once in a while. You don't take another step until God tells you it's time to make another step. And so one day you'll take a step. And you may step on down that step for a long time. You may be on that step for a month, a year, or two or three years. But one day, the Holy Spirit is going to come and just nudge you a little bit, and you're going to take another step. And you're going to keep stepping the way they stepped when they left Egypt. You notice they started out with one step. But one step led to another step. And then another step. And after a while, they had stepped so far that they couldn't even see Egypt anymore. All they had left was a testimony of what Egypt used to be like. But you had a couple of people who couldn't stop eating. You had a couple of people who just just allow food to overtake them. So they want to go back to Egypt so they can eat. Have you ever seen anybody want to go back to the devil just to eat? Well, I'm not going to ask that question because we got some folk in here who, amen, we got some folk in here who may not be able to get up from the table. And when they get up and look back, you know, you ever heard that saying, my eyes are bigger than my belly? Well, sometimes that is true in real life. I'm going to stop here because uh I got so much else to tell you, and I can't tell you all in this session, but I'm going to do this all next week. But I just want you to know that in order to get up to the Jebusites' kingdom and bring the Jebusites down, you got to keep moving. Don't let nothing stop you. I don't care what you're facing. You know why we get divorces? Because somebody stopped moving. Somebody stopped fighting. Amen. 
the reason we lose out on life because we stop fighting. If you are a Christian, you got to fight. Amen. Nothing has come, come to you without fighting for it. You may not feel like fighting. Some of us don't even know how to fight. Some of us, we fight and we beat in the wind. But you got to know how to fight. You got to know how to strategize. You got to know where the strategy is in order for you to get the victory. Somebody say, victory is mine. You see, victory is waiting on us. We're not waiting on it. Victory is mine and is waiting on you to get rid of that old messed up lifestyle you got, all that crazy junk floating around in your head. You got to get rid of it. You got to stop worrying about what people have said about you and what people are doing to you. You got to leave it alone. You got to get up, and, and, and after a while, you know, you always talk about, well, who said this to me, and who did that to me, and who said this, and who did this. After a while, you know what, you look back and say, you know what, it doesn't even matter anymore. I don't care what they say. I don't care what they did. I know what I got to do, and that's what I'm going to do. And allow God to raise you up, and once he raises you up, you're good to go. But you got to stay up. And if you slip and fall along the way, that's all right. Get back up again and keep on moving. But whatever you do, don't let the devil turn you around. Amen. God is good. God is good. I'm going to ask the praise team if they could just do a little something for me. Just a little something for an appeal moment. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. Amen. Things are made new, surrender my life to Christ. I'm moving, moving forward. Oh, 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 oh. I'm not going back, I'm moving ahead. Here to declare to you, my past is over in you. Things are made new, surrendered my life to Christ. I'm moving, moving forward. Said I'm moving
Yeah, you make all things new And I will follow you forward Some years ago, my wife and I first got married. We had a Corvette, and Pastor Benjamin Jones was conducting a tent effort across the bay from Mobile, Alabama. So my wife and I, she was a Bible worker, but she was pregnant with my first son. And just before we reached the tunnel, going under the river to go over to the other side, the right rear tire went flat. And we felt the car go down and the car was bumping and I pulled over and I said, Lord, I don't have a spare tire. So what are we going to do? I got out of the car and I walked around to the back and went to the other side. And, and I promise you, the tire was full of air. The tire was not flat. Now, I know that tire was flat before we stopped. But after we stopped, God filled that tire back up with air. So we were able to go on across the bay where my wife could do what she needed to do at the 10 effort. I said that to say this. Sometimes in our lives, our tires go flat. And sometimes we don't have a spare. We don't know who to go to, who to talk to. Sometimes there's nobody in our life that can help us when we go flat. These are times when you can only believe and trust God. Trust what you believe, what you have heard. As my wife says, know what you believe. You got to know what you believe. And if you know what you believe, then you know who you can go to in times like these. So we only had Jesus out on that road. He put the air back in that tire. We went on over to Bethany, crossed the bridge. My wife did her job that night. We went on back home. That tire never went flat again. I said that to say this, church, again. If you, if your tires are weak right now, I'm going to ask you to come to the front. We're going to ask God to fill your tires back up with air so that you can keep rolling for him. Not for yourselves, not to show off, but for the will of God in your life. And then I'm going to make two appeals. And you know, yes, I'm going to ask you. Yes, I'm going to say it. If you believe that God is working in your life right now, and he's asking you to make a change, make a turnaround, and you want to set your destination in action, you want to get baptized for the first time or re-baptized for the second time, I'm going to ask you to stand up right now. I'm going to ask you to do it. I'm not going to beg you to do it. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to give you that opportunity to allow God to work out the problems that you're having in your life. I don't care if you're still eating hog meat or catfish or or whatever. I don't care about that. And right now, neither does God. Because God knows how to clean you up. So we're not going to worry about what you're eating, or how much you're drinking, or what you're smoking, or what you're doing. That's not my problem. That's not my business. But God will fix that once you make that decision to give God your life. And then you decide your destination is going to be the new earth. I'm going home. How about you? I'm going home. I refuse to come here every Sabbath and Wednesday nights and whatever and, and, and give all my money, my tithes and offering to the church and, 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 and still be lost. I'm not going to do that. So if you are with me and that's how you feel, I need you to come on up here right now. Get up.
out of those seats and come down here and stand with me so that God can fix your life like he fixed mine. Now, the Bible tells us to compel one another. So I'm going to compel you right now. There's somebody in this church right now. You know you need the Lord. You know you need him. You're wrestling right now. You want to come down, but you don't want other people to know why you're coming or what's going on in your life. You need to get up and come down. Forget about other people. You need to go into the water. Come down to the front right now and give me your hand. Give God your heart so that God can start working on you and get you ready for the water. Amen. 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 God wants to, God wants to, amen. God wants to fix his children. God wants to fix us. And I'm going to ask you, have a seat right there for right now. There's got to be somebody else. There has to be somebody else in this church today, in this building today, who will say, Lord, I am going all the way. I've been struggling. I've been in and out and up and down. I've been wrestling with this thing. My wrestle is over. I want to be baptized. I want a new life, a new start. Before the end of this year, I want to make my calling and election sure. I don't want to take any more chances. I need you in my life now. If there's one more, please come on down front right now. I got time. I got time. And if you need me to come, I'll come and walk with you. If you just stick up a finger or something, just say, Pastor, I'm ready to do it. But I just, I, I'm a little timid. I don't feel quite strong enough to do it by myself. If you raise your hand a little bit, I'm going to come and walk with you. Is there one more person in here today who would say, yes, Lord, I want to do it now. I'm tired. I want to do it now. Is there one more person? You've been baptized, but you kind of backslid a little bit, and you decided, well, I want to come back. I've been trying to come back, but I don't have the strength by myself. I want to come back. Is there one more person in here right now who will say, yes, Lord, I'm ready. And I'm going to make an, another appeal. And why I'm making this appeal, if you're still here and you want to be baptized, I want you to come down front too. But my final appeal, the year is almost over. You don't want to make a New Year's resolution, but you don't want to go into next year the way you're in in this year. You need prayer. You need prayer. You need, you need to know that, 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 that God, you're going to help me to make this change within these next two weeks from who I am now to who you want me to be. So if that's you, I want you to come down front right now. Am I the only one in this church who wants a change in my life? Am I the only one here who, who, who is saying to God, I refuse to let next year catch me as messed up as I am this year. I want to change in my life. I want to change. Is there anybody else? Maybe if you could just hit that note just a couple more times. Yes. I'll follow you forward. Church, this is serious business. You forward. This is serious business. I'll follow you forward. I'll follow you forward. I'll follow you forward. Will you follow him today? I'll follow you forward. Will you go? Oh, oh, Are you ready to go into the vineyard? Are you ready to really work for God? Are you ready to do what God called you to do? Well, first you got to fix it. Your Jebusite kingdom is in front of you, and you can't get up there by yourself. You need some help. The only way David was able to get up there, because God was with him. Are you here today? Are you here right now? Do you need God's help in your life? All right. Well, my final appeal is to you. We want to pray for one another. 
we need a praying church. And we're going to make sure that before this year is over, we're going to get up out of ourselves and start praying for other people. If that is in your spirit, then I want you to come down front so that we can pray and ask God to change your heart, change your spirit, so that you can start praying for other people and not just you. move forward. Gonna move forward. I figured Said I'm somebody gonna, gonna come move up here with me. Forward. I, I just, I just oh, knew that everybody wasn't gonna just sit back and allow this forward. day to pass. This may be your last to opportunity to reconnect with God. This may be it. Gonna move you have no forward. guarantee that you're gonna leave here today and make it home safely. Lord, you have no guarantee that you're gonna leave here right now and make it home at all. So and don't I'm pass, don't let this time pass you by. Oh, I'm gonna move forward. Follow you forward. You wanna go with him? Oh, I need to move forward. You wanna go with him? Gonna follow you. If he can turn my forward. life around, he can turn yours around. Said I need to move forward. Is there one more person in here that's gonna come up here and stand for God? Forward. I can't stand for you. I can stand with you, but I can't stand for you. Is there one more person that's gonna come and stand for God? If not, we're just gonna pray. But while I am praying, you can still come up and give God your heart. Every eye is closed. Every head is bowed. Every heart is open to the will of God right now. Our Father in heaven, your children who are standing here in this circle right now, they're here for a purpose. One is here because I believe she wants to get baptized. The others are here, Lord, because I believe they need prayer and support. And I'm here because I need prayer and support. I believe there are others out there, Lord, who are actually in need of the same thing, but for whatever reason, they didn't come down to the front. But for those who did come down to the front, I'm going to ask you, Lord, to send your spirit right now and touch each one of these persons. Let your spirit move in this little circle here right this minute, Father. Because they came down, Lord, with one mind set, and they're going to go back to their seats with another. There's going to be a transition in here right this minute. I pray, pray, Lord, that you transform us from what we used to be to what you would have us to be. Help us to become what we are supposed to become for you and to be used in your service. Clean us up right now, Father. Clean us up and present us to be used in your kingdom. Now, Lord, I don't know what else to say to you because these are your children. I don't know what to tell you to do for them, but I'm going to ask right now that your will be done in their lives. They came with open minds and open hearts. You know their needs. Please fulfill those needs right now, Father. Fulfill those needs so that they can feel fresh and renewed. And we're going to thank you in advance for hearing our prayers. And we're going to thank you for answering. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the whole church say amen, amen, amen. me forward said I need to move forward forward Lord push me forward oh Lord take me forward oh I'm ready to go 
forward. Amen. You know, Jesus said that by your love for one another, that is how people will know that we are his disciples. And like the pastor, he's trying to get us ready. He's trying to get us to love one another. But you know, sometimes love can get tough. You know, it's a tough world out there. And the enemy is out there. You know, the scripture said that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You know, so we really need the Holy Spirit to walk this walk. I guess we all could use more of the Holy Spirit. I know I can. You know, I, Let's stand and let's pray. Father in heaven, the Almighty, Jehovah. Father, it's in Christ's name, in the name of Jesus, that we are so thankful that you have allowed us to come into your house one more time. We thank you, Lord, for the scriptures, for the preaching. We thank you for our pastor. We thank you, Father, for all of your many blessings that you bestowed upon your people, Lord. But Father, we ask that you, you go with us as we prepare to leave this place, that the Spirit will go with us, and that you will bless, keep, and protect us as we travel up and down these dangerous highways. And Father, we pray to strengthen us, and make us part of your army. We thank you, we bless your holy name. In Christ's name we do pray, amen. You may be seated. Leader, the leader for the Love the Church would like to meet with her group just for a few minutes. So, right over here on this side, just for a few minutes. Thank you. Want to remind you also that it's Outreach Sabbath for us to serve our community, and we're waiting for you to come and help us. Many make light work, but we look forward to you helping us this Sabbath. Thank you so much for your assistance.